Okay everyone, this is Mike and welcome back to the Soul Unleashed. And today I'm really excited to have as my guest just Nikki. And she'll explain what she does here in just a minute. But uh, Nikki and I met completely by accident. Yeah. So I think however this happened, it was divinely inspired. I thought she was somebody else <laughs> when, I, when I found you on Facebook. And uh turns out to be your just Nikki, of course, and I'm really happy that we had a chance to talk. So N yes. Nikki, can you at, at, towards the end of the broadcast, we'll talk about the links that you have in your website and everything. Mm -hmm. But can you just start by telling us, you know, what it is that you do? Uh, well, I have an intuitive gift, and I use that gift to help others. Um, I call myself a divinely led director, to be honest, because I am able to listen to the soul's mysteries, and I'm able to connect the soul's information to the human in you know in this lifetime and i and i help them um with the 3d you know the third dimension reality based on what their soul wants to what based on what their soul wants to communicate to them in this lifetime yeah you know third dimension reality i, I haven't heard that before so what what is that um that's our reality right now our human reality you know, okay. how we move through this life and what we do and who we are. and Okay, I get um, that. I, I thought you were speaking about something else. So, mm -mm. so so, what dimension, if any, do you get guidance from? Uh, I really, I actually don't know. I do know I'm a multidimensional being, so I can travel through dimensions and get information for people. Um, and there's so many of them. I'm not sure exactly how many I can travel, but I'm able to go, I have the knowledge of the esoteric world, basically. I was born with that. And so when people ask me to read for them, I'm literally reading information that their souls are wanting to receive right in this very moment to help them move forward in some way of their life, whether it's relationship, career, um, so that's, within so that's their, their own know. internal journey. Okay. I'm sorry for interrupting you. So, so, that's, so okay. that's that's how you basically help people as you uh, like have a session like this, like we're doing right now. Do you do it remotely? I do. I do it remotely. I also do it in per person, but most of my sessions are done remotely. Okay. And I'm going to ask you just a second about how this all started for you, but what does a session typically um, look like? I mean, do you use hypnosis or... Does a person just sit and talk to you or how does that work? Um, well, I, I do have a little blurb on my website about how I access information. Um, but when somebody calls me, what I'm able to do is rise above their physical body and am able to connect to what I call a grid of light that's around the human body. And then I'm able to connect to a certain point on that grid. And then I start reading the information on the grid. Um, it usually comes in the form of stories or images. Um, and I've e even myself have asked my, my creator, my guides, like, why does it come in like that? And I find it to be very interesting because I cannot distort those images. Um, just last week, I did a session for someone and I said something about moon and wolf. And she said, oh, those are my dog's names. So they, <laughs> the images come in. I talk about what the images are. And I don't have any reference for those images. I just, I'm just talking what I, what I hear. So you, do you hear things or see things or both? Um, I'm here. I hear them. Yeah, I'm auditory. So when you got the moon and the wolf thing, you got those words? Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So how did this all start for you? Uh, well, I was born with this gift. Um, I started realizing it probably around the age of eight. Um, I could, I just knew things that other people didn't know. And I would communicate those things and other people would look at me like I was very strange or what is she saying? How does she know these things? Um, and I always had a connection to spirit too. I remember having images, hearing things, very young, yet very young. 
What did your parents think? Um, well, they just didn't know. I tried to talk to my mom about it a little bit. Um, and I would tell her that I was being visited by things and she would say, oh, that's not possible. And I said, but it is happening. And it was just a very hard situation for me and for them, I think, because they just didn't know anything about it. And how, how were you raised? What type of uh, uh, faith paradigm? Catholic. Okay. Yeah. Did you go to Catholic schools? No. I did not. Okay. So, so did you wind up trying to suppress this, this, these things or what happened when you became like a teenager and you were dealing with all the normal teenager challenges? Um, that is like a really great question. I feel like I stopped, I did suppress it during my teen years. I really asked that it, uh, die off for me during those years so I could be with my peers and not listen. I did. I wasn't trained back then either. So I would just hear things about people or situations that I didn't really know how I was understanding these things. So I just asked for it to shut down during my teenage years. And I don't even know how I knew that. Uh, uh, when I think back about my growing up years, I feel very divinely led in this, uh, in this gift that I have, because I didn't even know I could turn it off. I didn't know I could I, I didn't even know I could ask for that, but I did. And that did, did happen. Ever, did you ever think about using it to your advantage in any way? Yeah, I feel like when you are an untrained, well, I'll speak for me. As an untrained intuitive, uh, yes, I do feel like that ability to manipulate or change circumstances is, you can do that. I mean, you just don't really know what you're dealing with. And like you if don't you're getting relationships or something. Can you read other people? You know, um, whether this is the right guy or the wrong person or whatever. I feel like um, with my intuitive gift, I cannot really access anyone or anything unless I'm given permission. But I do also have a very keen sixth sense, you know, like a sixth sense about people. Um, or situations, but I would not say that that's my intuitive gift. My, my intuition, I have to be invited in by people in order to help them, in order to read them. But I do so, have a strong ability to um, sense what's going on. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Um, so, so when did you get trained or learn how to control it? Well, when I was getting ready to have my first daughter, I had a hard time conceiving her. And then she actually talked to me from the other side and said that she wouldn't come in unless I started owning my intuitive gifts. Before she was um, born? Yes. She started oh, talking okay. to me. And then I remember having this conversation with my spouse. I was like, what is happening? I think I'm going crazy. This, this being is talking to me. I don't know what's going on. Um, and so then I wound up in this uh, seminar with these ladies from Texas, and they became my mentors. They became my spiritual mentors for 10 years. And they taught me about my intuitive gift. They taught me about my psychology, um, like who I was and the different things that I had to work out within myself and the deep dive into that so that um, I didn't do what you were suggesting, manipulating people and um, you know, projecting on people. So I went through a very intense training for 10 years and, you know, universal laws, my gift, my psychology. So a very deep dive into how to actually care for people in this way when you're leading them this way. Was this before your daughter was born or well, obviously 10 years so after she was born, but yeah, well, I decided to get into classes with them and then my daughter was born and you know, that that's how that happened. Is that what this group does is they train intuitives? Is that, how, how, um, how did you find them? I just wound up in a seminar with them. I, I took a class and I just wound up meeting them. Um, I do think they do it. Uh, this particular group, there was like 15 of us and we went through training together. 
And we were with these ladies for 10 years, um, getting mentored. And so these people, these 15 people that I'm referring to are some of the best readers that I know. We all went through quite a bit to, to be able to do this kind of work for people. Now, when you were, when you were doing this, did you have like another job or was this, was this always your goal to do this and help people? No, I, I didn't know anything about it, Mike, to be honest. I knew I had this intuitive gift. I didn't really understand it. I went into school training with them. But I, at that time I had my degree in coaching. So I was actually a certified coach at the time. And that's what my career was while I was learning how to do this. What, what type of coach? A life coach. Okay, cool. So, yeah. you, so you were doing that at, at the same time you were yes becoming trained. Okay. Yes. And, th and then at some point you felt, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but you felt trained enough to to do what you're doing now professionally? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I've been doing this probably for 25 years now. Oh, you look so young. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, <appreciate> awesome. <laughs> so so to tell me more about what, what you do and how you do it. Um, I think it's a really hard thing to explain. I mean, I've had a really hard time explaining it. Um, I, I feel like I'm able to access uh, different frequencies and vibrations of energy. Um, I'm able to traverse different dimensions to get that information for people. Um, I'm very attuned to the chakra system and the universal chakras up, you know, above our crown. I just feel like I you know, whatever it is that someone's in front of me needing, I'm able to access that information for them. And I don't know really where I pull it from or how I do it. It just, it just starts funneling through me. So I know we're not doing a reading now or anything, but if you were to, to be doing something, a reading with me, do you call it a reading or yeah. a session? Or, okay. I call it so a session. Okay. So if you're doing a session with me, you would be talking to my, my, Uber soul or larger yeah. soul? Or... I would be talking to your soul. I would be talking to your guides, your guidance system. I would be talking to, you know, any presences that want to speak with you, like um, anything from a past life, any angels, any ascended masters, uh, any frequency shifts that you're needing to make or a vibrational shift, like all of that information comes through. Do you meet my my guides? Do they, do they identify themselves as as my guides or the, whoever you're you're having the session with? It's that person's guides that you're talking to. If mm -hmm. they decide to come through, yes. Mm -hmm. And and you can't control what's going to come through. Is that no? Okay. No, I can't. Is there anything you could share for for people that are listening to this and wondering what the heck? Um, <laughs> just share a, maybe a, a, a story about someone that may have a, a surprised you or, or, or when you were doing this work without revealing anything about anybody. Um, let me see. Because what I'm trying to give my listeners a sense of is how this how this works, right? I mean, I, I've never done anything like this. I've been the mediums and psychics, but, um, but what you're talking about is something different for me. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, you don't consider yourself a psychic, right? No, I consider myself an intuitive okay. and I'm not really sure what the difference is. I, you know, I think that up until this, not up until this point, like in, in my life, if I just think about my life in general, I used to go to psychics too, and I would go to them so that they would help me predict the future, like what is going to happen, like how is it going to happen? And then once I started getting trained and understanding uh, my intuitive gifts, I realized that we really are in charge of our own realities. So even if we do get a reading of that nature, we really can think about those readings and we can actually change them based on our reality, our thought process, our beliefs, 
um, changing who we fundamentally are and we can really change our own realities. I feel like that's the, the other gift that I was given is the keys of co-creation, like understanding that we are our own life artists. Okay. I'm so gonna I don't really, really, I, huh? I really, really, I, I really, really plan to ask you about that. So we'll get back to that. Yeah. So I really don't, but, you know, I can't say the difference between psychics, intuitives, um, mediums. I, I think we all have a gift. We all use those gifts differently. Um, yeah. I, I, the psychics I've spoken with would, would certainly say that they were intuitive also. Yes. Uh, but I, I do think that for me anyway, psychics are more like predicting what's going to happen. Am I going to fall in love? Am I going to meet Mr. or Miss Wright? That kind of thing. Right. Um, and so unfortunately that connotes a little bit more of a carnival atmosphere than maybe doing the deep work that you do in terms of downloading guidance for somebody. Yeah. Um, but is there any example that you could just give us in terms of maybe how you help someone through that guidance? And then I want to ask you about the co-creation part. Let's see. I can, I can explain maybe some intuition that maybe would come through. Like right now, some of my sessions are relating to pyramids um and how pyramids were constructed and how that makes sense to a person i may be reading for um you know different spiritual uh if somebody would need to change a frequency i can tell them how they're operating in this moment versus maybe what the universe would like to see from them and i'm able to explain what the universe is wanting to see from them um so yeah, those are a couple examples of what kind of information comes through when I'm you, reading you, for people. You, uh, you had me at pyramids. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to ask you to tell me how the pyramids were built, but <laughs> that's the kind of information that you might get for somebody that yes. you would give to them. Yes. Is that because they're looking for that information on their own or because that information somehow helps them understand something else? Uh, well, most people that are drawn to me are, you know, entrepreneurs or creatives or people who own businesses. And really, the signature of that energy is people who have, are really wanting to know something that they can't find in a book, for example. Like, what I really want to know who I am. I want to know what I'm about. I want to know the mysteries that are locked inside of me. And that's generally the people that find me. So if somebody is calling me, they're wanting to know, do I have information about pyramids inside of me? Do I have a technology oh, inside, that I haven't unlocked yet? Inside of them. So yeah. so for people listening to this, they're willing to, to, to pay whatever the heck it costs to find out the pyramids were built. That's not the only reason why they should contact you. Right. No, no. <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually people are contacting me because they have a goal they're wanting to achieve. They haven't been able to find the knowledge in a book. Um, what do I have to unlock about myself that's going to allow me to continue to achieve, grow, understand myself? Um, yeah, so those, that, those are generally the reasons why people call me. Now, talk to, talk to us if you could please about co-creation because is, is this manifestation by another name? Mm, let me think. I'm going to listen to what they want to tell me about this. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to make one quick distinction about manifestation versus co-creation. So manifestation, if I said that I wanted to have a house uh, twice as big as the house I have now, I'm asking the universe to manifest that for me. So the, that's a request of the universe. And then if you're co-creating with the universe, you would actually start watching your reality and start understanding how what you asked for is actually already happening in your present moment. And then you would decide, like for example, if I want a house twice as big as the house I have now, I would probably have to make more money 
I would have to figure out how I was going to make that money. Um, I would figure out what area I wanted to live in. So then what you would do co-creation wise is you would start watching your reality and you would start realizing like, oh, I have fear around creating whatever, 20,000 more dollars a month for me to be able to manifest this house. And so that's where I would work with people. What do you have to do? And who do you have to be in the moment right now to change your reality in order to make that manifestation happen? So you're actually co-creating with your reality to make the manifestation that you requested happen. That's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I fully subscribe to what you just said because I, mean, I listen to a lot to Mike Dooley. And he does talk a lot about um, doing the work. Yeah. Right? You, you just can't wish for a house twice as big and, and hope somebody calls you tomorrow and says, hey, I have a house. Do you want it? Um, right. You have to do the work or, or take action yes. to, to, to get there. So the concept of co-creating in terms of taking action makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And that that information is inside of you as well. You do, you do have those keys. You can unlock the mysteries inside of yourself in order to create the reality that you would like to live in. So ex explain about that just a little bit. So using the same example, if I wanted a house twice as big, and, and I have no problem with the whole materialism thing. So if right. I wanted a house twice as big, the key within me is what? The key to what I should be doing? Yes, what you should be doing or how you raise your vibration. Like you can even make experiences happen so that you have to stand in that vibration of energy and actually encounter it. So for example, I'll just use myself an example. Okay. I have I have a real issue with being seen. So this is a big deal for me to be on a podcast and allow people to see me. So, but I also want to grow my business. So right now I am in my own co-creation. I am sitting here on this podcast with you, having an experience with you in order to unlock the key to growing my business. So I'm getting to experience myself. Like what is my fear? Am I going to show up? Am I going to have confidence when I show up? Am I going to be able to root Deep inside myself, if when this is published and people are like, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not vibing with her or like, I am right now giving you an example of my work. <laughs> that's great. No, that's, that's a perfect yeah. example. Yeah. So when you work with somebody and uh, say, I'm, um, I'm a person trying to grow my business, but I have a fear of public speaking and I, and I need to speak to be on stage to grow whatever it is I do. Do you get information downloaded to you that helps you understand to communicate to me that that's my fear if I don't know that? Or how do, how yes. do you participate in that? I communicate your fear, but then I also give you the information that you need in order to be able to do the public speaking. And then after you do it, we talk about where does the energy look right now? Like how far are you on this timeline? Um, and then what do you need to shift also? Like, where where are you now? After you have the experience, where are you after the experience? And then what needs to shift and occur in order to keep the momentum going on the timeline that you're trying to create? So all of that information is constantly downloading to me. All of it. Now, are you talking about someone that you're working with, like, for multiple sessions? Yeah. I, I work on retainer, ideally. Because okay. I'm really, because we are working on a goal. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can you see or sense the shift? Like if I go and speak and I overcome that fear and we meet again, can you, um, or say I don't do it, but I tell you I do. <laughs> can, you, can you sense that? Yeah, I can. I can, ins okay. I can sense how much of you, how much you've embodied in yourself. You know what? I can see where you are. Yeah. Okay. 
that's uh, that's pretty cool. There's something on your website, and I don't have it in front of me here, um, that you mentioned about simple something. Um, uh, simple technology. Is that, yes. is that I, something? Can you explain that? I think we're talking about it right now. This is the oh, simple technology. That's okay. um, not, it's simple, but it's not easy. You no, know? it doesn't sound easy at all. Yeah. It's, it is simple though, but it's hard but what, work. What strikes me as key would be your insight into where I am on that journey uh, or what progress I've made or helping me identify what my fears or, or things holding me back yeah. might be. Can I ever get to the point, maybe working with you or not, where I can get that information myself? Oh, yes, I hope so. Along the way, along the journey, when people are with me for a while, I teach them how to access their own intuition. And I teach them about their own signatures of energy and to witness them themselves and how to do that. Like I, I basically teach them along the way how this all works. And ideally, they don't need me after a certain amount of time. Um, they understand themselves so well. Okay. Yeah. They understand their own technology. <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So what else do you do that we haven't covered yet? Well, this is really all I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, this is who, it's pretty this amazing is all by itself. <laughs> this is who I am. I'm thinking of starting to write a series of books um, about the heart and I think one of the rays that I deal, the rays of light that I deal with is the ascension rays. And one part of ascension is really learning about love, like the, the frequency of love and the vibration of love. And I really would like to write a series of books about that. I think humanity could greatly benefit from understanding that frequency, can you, the frequency can you of love. explain the, the, the rays um the thing and what do you actually connect to is it the rays well, yeah the way that i was trained was in the universal laws and the universal laws as they correspond to the rays of light so there's seven rays and i learned about each ray and then learned about the ascended masters and the archangels and the uh, elementals that helped created the planet. So that's just the training that I went through. And if you think about that, all of that's happening above the head, you know, above the head. And then you think about how uh, shamanism is all the earth and the earthly body and the chakras. And so I was just trained with the, the universal law and the rays above the head, you know, above the crown. And is it, to these rays or one of these rays that you connect when you share information, say we're doing a, se a session with me, that's what mm -hmm. you connect to? That's where it comes for, from? I think the rays of light that I'm, I deal with in the most for my own being, the way that I keep my energy field clean and clear is I work with uh, the blue ray of light, which is the throat chakra. And I work with the white ray, which is in the um, sacral chakra. Um, so the white ray is about purity and the blue ray is about God's will. And those are the two rays of light that I use to tune my energy field when I start listening uh, to people. Yeah. I, yes. I think um, having a pure connection to source is important if we're in my work. That's a, uh... That sounds beautiful, especially how you describe it in terms of love. So, so Nikki, I, I ask uh, a lot of people this question because I'm still searching for the answer like everybody else, but mm -hmm. what, what, what happens to us when our physical body stops? Um, I have had this experience, Mike, actually. I've died a couple times in my life, and I'll just speak to that. Um, I, my soul left my physical presence 
and I was hovering above my body and I could see everything going on and I could not get back. I called it home. I could not get back to my home. I couldn't, I could not figure out how to get back. And it was a really interesting experience. And I feel like when people talk about life after death, that's what they do talk about. Their souls actually leave their physical bodies. And that, that did happen. I mean, it's, it's wild. But you came back. I did come back. I did come so back. So do you describe that as a near death experience? Yeah. That you had? Mm hmm Did it yeah. follow some of the classic things in terms of near death, in terms of a tunnel or light, or were you just out and then you came back? I was, for me, I was just out in what looked to be the galaxy to me. It was just a, a different space than this reality. And I could see myself here, but I was no longer attached to my physical presence. When you connect to the power that you connect to, do you experience any other forms of consciousness other than divine or like, can you connect to people that have passed? Um, if they come through a reading, I can, but I don't like, if you ask me for a reading and you ask me to connect to someone who's passed, I wouldn't be able to do that. But if you come to me, uh, and you say you want a reading and you've read the website and you and I have talked and I just go into your energy field, if somebody is wanting to talk to you, I can listen to their energy and talk to you. Okay. I mean, even mediums I've worked with, you can't ask them to connect to specific people. Yeah. They, they connect with whoever comes through. Yeah. Um, That's me too. Okay. I just connect to whatever's coming through. Okay. The, the point of that question for me though, was back to the, what happens when we die or, are those conscious beings that you connect to, where are they? Is there some type of other place that they, they go to? Mm hmm. Hold on. I'm going to ask them. <laughs> Please. So the way that they're showing me this is connecting to containers. And the way that I'm interpreting that is containers to be dimensions of reality. Um, and then they're showing me a hierarchy. So it's like, uh, there's this hierarchy, there's this hierarchy. And then you can see which container of energy those beings are uh, associated with. Um, and then hold on, I want to, I want to classify one more. I want to ask one more thing. I've never really heard this before, so this is interesting, but it does say that there's a trust level between the reader and the different entities or uh, guides or beings that are wanting to speak. So there's, there's a relationship between the readers and them. Um, and I think this is a good qualification for readers to make sure that wh whatever they're channeling is uh, you know, good, whatever you're channeling is good for the person you're reading for. That's what, um, I've been mentioning this a lot the last few days with people, Mike, is that when you are reading for people or giving a session in this way, that your ultimate, where you should ultimately be sitting is that this is in the care of the person you're reading for. And I think the relationship between readers and entities and beings and archangels and ascended masters, there should be a dialogue going on there. Like, what is it that you're wanting to communicate? Um, is this good for the person I'm reading for? Why is this important for them? Um, what do I need to clarify? Are you fitting into a light, dark shadow experience? Like, 
you can be in dialogue with them. Can can you? The container thing is super fascinating. And yeah, they've never does, explained does, it to me like that before. It, does that indicate some type of hierarchy? Yeah, it does. It looks like it does. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we can. We I don't think we can classify it as hierarchy that we do here, but it's a hierarchy based on energy based on frequency based on vibration like just as frequency and vibrations like as we recognize here like a sad is a vibration and a frequency and then christ consciousness is a vibration and a frequency you know there's a lot of different levels to those things right 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 so can and then the other thing you mentioned there about making sure that it's good so is it possible for you to connect to things that are not for the be the good of the person that you're reading for? Um, I have had that experience a few times. I don't experience it very often, but it does happen. It does happen. And you recognize that as that's something that's not for their, their best good? But that Yes, I try. Well, before I enter a session with someone, I try to always qualify that it's the highest and best good for their soul. And so if something is coming in, like I mentioned my sixth sense, if I start feeling like something isn't matching or resonating or I don't feel good about it, I kind of go into dialogue. Like what is, what is going on here? Um, or I don't connect to it at all. Just depends okay. on what it is. Yeah. Okay. Nikki, yeah. we're probably going to stop here, but the more I talk to you, the more fascinated I get. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's some pretty amazing stuff, especially that you were able to connect while we're talking and get guidance. Oh yeah. Um, when I don't know something, I don't, I don't, I like to ask. Do you do that like throughout the day for yourself or do you just, does it just come to you or do you have to actually take a pause and try and connect? Um, I, I really try not to speak unless it's something that I've qualified or something that makes sense. I, so if it doesn't make sense to me, I do usually take a pause and listen a little bit deeper. Yeah. Like your daily life when like, yeah. like you're driving around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So please I'll put these in the show notes, but tell, tell everybody, you know, how they can find you to work with you. Well, I do have a website and it's just Nikki.net. And I do have an Instagram page and it's just Nikki V. Um, and mind, then. Would you mind spelling that? Because there's never ways to spell Nikki. Oh, sure. Um, Nikki, N I K K I. And so, V, like in Victor. Okay. Yeah. So just N I K K I dot net and. Just Instagram Nikki is, V just for Instagram. V. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And people can contact you through the website mm -hmm. to do the work. Okay. Yep. Okay, so just to wrap things up, what what topic, if any, have we not touched on that you were hoping I would ask you? Oh, I don't know. I'm just grateful to be here and just grateful to have the experience. And like I said, I'm working on my own uh, on my own timeline right now. So it was <laughs> nice that you found me because otherwise I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> that is very strange the way that happened. So I think there's, there's yeah. a purpose behind it. I do feel like it was synchronistic. I feel like this is exactly what the magic of my work, to be honest. Like I been wanting to work on this. I wanted an opportunity. It came. I said yes. And, <laughs> and here we are. Wonderful. Yeah. So okay. I just thank you. Thank you for, you know, just letting me do it. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, me well, too. Thank you. thank you so okay. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.